I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today and we welcome you to our Bible study on the apostolic doctrine of eschatology. The question that's most often asked is what does eschatology have to do with salvation? The word eschatology comes from the Greek word eschatos found in the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 16 and 17. Eschatos means last. Eschatology involves a variety of Christian doctrines concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the dead, and the last judgment, and the end of the old covenant that God had with Israel. The word doctrine means instruction to learning, specific teachings, as in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Jesus take, said this, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Eschatology is the study of the last day's generation of the old covenant that God had with Israel and covers that period from A.D. 30 to A.D. 70. It was through the Apostles' doctrine that gave the expectation to first century Christians that Jesus would soon return in their lifetime. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 23, along with these other scriptures, the Bible tells us this. But when they persecute you in this city, flee you into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Be also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signify it by his angel unto his servant John who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand and he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. For the time is at hand. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Now Jesus kept his promise to return in that first century generation. The apostles were correct in saying that Jesus would return soon in their lifetime. If anyone is going to speak the words of God to their generation, 
he is required to speak all of the words, not 50%, not 75%, or even 90%, but all of the words of God. Notice what God said in Exodus chapter 24 and verse 8, Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 28, Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 27. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee forever, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, they, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they shall not answer thee. And again, in the book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 20, what the angel told Peter to do. Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. When God reveals to us more truth, He expects us to walk in that light. When we prefer traditional Christianity over Scripture, we make the Word of God of none effect. Mark chapter 7, verses 9 and 13. And He said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Either what God has said is true, or what man says is true. There is no partial truth. Romans chapter 3, verses 3 and 4 said this, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. We are justified in our faith in God because of the Word. Today there is a war of words, man's word against God's word. When the early church of the first century began, all of its foundation was built upon the teachings of the apostles and prophets, Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. When the church was born on the day of Pentecost, and the first message of the gospel of Jesus Christ was preached, they were directed by the Lord to continue steadfastly in the teachings of the apostles. So said chapter Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. This great salvation message was not to be neglected. God bearing them witness... In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3, the scripture said this, And how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? The scriptures teach that to whom much is given, much shall be required. Truth bears a responsibility. Jesus told the apostles to go and teach all nations to observe all things whatsoever he commanded them to teach. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The end of the age is what he was saying. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16, the Apostle Paul said to take heed unto the teachings of the Apostles. Salvation would be the end result. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt save both thyself 
and them that hear thee. Everywhere the apostles went in the New Testament, they preached the message that Jesus gave to them. It impacted the Christians' lives so much that they sold their possessions and laid them down at the apostles' feet. In Acts chapter 4, verses 31 to 35. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. Those first century Christians, they believed what the apostles taught about Jesus, about his resurrection from the dead, and about his return in their lifetime. They took upon themselves the yoke of commitment to the gospel, and through the teaching of the apostles, they learned about the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus confirmed the apostles' doctrine. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3, the scripture said this, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. And in Mark chapter 16, verse 20, the scripture said this about confirmation. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Jesus had the words of eternal life. He gave these words to the apostles, and the apostles received them. Notice what it said in John chapter 6, verse 68, 17, and verse 8. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Now Jesus prayed for everyone that would believe on him through the apostles' teachings, through their doctrine. In John chapter 17 and verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Now this is the conclusion to what does eschatology have to do with salvation? Part 1. Spiritual life only begins when you are born again. Then is when the learning process begins. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9 and 10 said this, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Growing produces changes that often become a struggle when discarding traditional beliefs. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, the scripture said this, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be glory both now and forever. Amen. Knowledge is simply knowing the facts. A lot of people are sincerely ignorant because they don't know the facts. Some are even willingly ignorant. Those are those who do not want to know the facts. The input of doctrinal truths will produce the output of change in your life and in your lifestyle. Romans chapter 6 verse 17 and 18 tells us about willingness to obey. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart 
that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Now Romans chapter 16 and verse 17 tells us to avoid the teachings of man-made doctrine, the doctrine of men. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Paul reminds Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 and 3 this, As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Notice what it said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables the apostle paul was telling timothy they were not to teach any other doctrine. Don't be a part of things that are falsehoods. They simply lead to confusion and chaos and to fables. Notice what Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 says. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. How many times have we heard preachers tell us this scripture in Hebrews chapter 6, 1 and 2? How many times have they said and only read up to the laying on of hands without mentioning resurrection and judgment? All of these things were the basic understanding and the doctrine that the apostles, they taught and they preached everywhere they went in the New Testament. God, nor His Word, has changed. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, James chapter 1 verse 17, and Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 said this, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. God has not changed. There is no other doctrine that we should follow outside of the doctrine of the apostles. There are many man-made doctrines which are taught and believed today in churches all around the world that contradict the Word of God. What it took to be saved 2,000 years ago, it still takes to be saved today and forever thereafter. And that is the apostolic doctrine. Remember, God has fulfilled all of His promises that were written in the Scripture. Notice Luke 21, verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Any question, any comment that you want to make, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com. Thank you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified.